All right, guys, welcome back. And in this video, we're going to be making the other piece of the puzzle, and that is the client. Now, the client is going to be a lot easier than the server because remember, all the client is going to do is once it's running, it's going to connect to the server. And then once it's connected, it's just going to wait for instructions. And whenever it gets an instruction, it's going to run that command. And then it's going to take the result and send it back to the server. So basically, it's pretty much the equivalent of this. It pops open a shell, but you can have it hidden if you want. And then it's just going to say, OK, I'm connected to the server. What do you want me to do? And then from the server, which is going to be us, we're just going to say um, type DIR and hit enter. So it types DIR, hits enter, and then all of this output, it sends back to the server so we can see. So we're basically controlling someone else's computer by giving it instructions to basically tell it what to do. Now, what you actually need to connect to a server is the IP address, of course, that's how computers find each other. And for this little demo, at first, I'm just going to be connecting to my own local machine. And if you don't know your IP address, if you type IP config in the command line and hit enter, then you can get it there. Or, you know, well, I'm sure you guys can figure out the IP address of your own computer, but there you go. All right, so we're going to import OS. And again, this just lets us access, access the operating system and basically run commands just like you would type them into a new terminal. And who the heck is texting me? Gerard. All right. And import socket so we can connect to the server and import sub process. So this is basically what well, you guys are going to be seeing in a second. These two things are going to allow us to pretty much control the operating system of the target machine. All right, so just like before, I can actually probably copy some of this. Actually, let me copy all of this. All right, so we pretty much connect to it just like we set it up on the server. It needs a host. And let me move this. Might be a little bit easier to see. Understand this way. All right. So there's our socket. Hey, this computer can connect with other computers. The host is 192.168.0.5. Now this IP address is this the IP address of my computer right here, my Windows machine. But later on in the next video, or maybe not the next video, maybe in two videos or so, I'm going to be just typing in the IP address of the server right here. And that's all you have to do. Change one little thing and everything's going to work perfect. So now we created the socket, we gave it the information, and now we can just bind everything. So S connect, and remember that's the host, and port. So I just connect to my own computer through this port, and it's all good. And you can actually set it up through functions, but we already saw that. You can actually make this a class. It might be a little bit better if you do some object-oriented programming, but I'm too lazy, so <laughs> whatever. So now that we have all of our information, what I want to do is I want to make an infinite loop because basically once this program's running, it's just going to keep listening and listening and waiting for instructions. And are you kidding me? Like a million people started texting me in the middle of my video. All right. So it's going to just keep listening for instructions. And the time that this program ends is dependent on the server. So whenever the server closes the connection, that's when this loop is going to break. So whatever data it receives is going to be equal to S receive. And then we'll just write the buffer size. So again, this is data that it receives from the server, basically what instructions we're going to get it. And now I just want to do a couple um, data checks. And that's this. I want to check if the first two characters are equal to CD. Now, let me do this. So, all right, so remember, it's gonna be bytes right now, and we need to convert it to a string, and then we're gonna test if that is equal to CD. Now, the reason I do this is because most of the time, whenever we give it an instruction like DIR, it runs a command, and it has some results for you know it to send back to us and also if we just write like echo hey there you go we ran a command it has some output send that output back to us 
However, check out what happens when you're at like CD dot dot. There is no output. All we're doing here is we're changing a directory. So anytime we want to move directories, then we need to handle this a little bit differently than you know your standard commands. So what we need to do, and in order to change directories through Python, then you can actually write OS, which means access my operating system and run change directory. So from here, if we ran a command like that, it would be the equivalent of typing this. So that's all it's doing back into Bucky. So with that being said, what we can do is this. All right, so this checks the data received and looks at the first two characters and sees if, uh, here, let me do this. So say that we have a command like this coming in CD Bucky. So it looks at the first two and says, okay, this is a change directory command. So now what I wanna do is actually get what's ever after that. And that would be three right there. So it's gonna say, okay, what directory do you wanna move into? And any characters after this, that's where it's going to change to. So again, this is basically, or this is basically the name of the directory where we're trying to move, simple enough. 